Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, new hog hunting video today. Um, we have some more pigs in the trap. And the uh, trap actually worked really good. It's a different area here. We had three pigs go in the trap that one night. Uh, fairly decent sized one, like bigger ones. And I usually see the smaller ones go in. Usually the bigger ones, the more mature pigs, um, they might have come across a trap like this before and then they usually avoid it. Uh, this area though, we haven't trapped any here. Uh, I'm not aware of anybody else trapping. I know sometimes they fly a helicopter out here and shoot some pigs, but it's uh, Brushy Creek behind us. So it's a pretty interesting area. We they actually have access to quite a few properties along the Brushy Creek, um, uh, but you know, miles, tens of miles away from each other. The Brushy Creek was always an in, in, in area of interest for us to figure out how these, these pigs actually travel. Uh, and now we have the opportunity to actually do that. So we have uh, three good sized pigs in the trap. Uh, one big sow and a feisty sow. She is uh, definitely not amused right now being trapped in there. I have my uh, good friend John over here. Uh, it's gonna be his first time uh, wrestling a pig. I don't know if he knows what's, what's coming uh, for in here, but um, uh, Paul Wagon Chris behind the camera. And um, yeah, let's let's get this let's get this uh, show on the road. We had some some pigs in the trap just last night or the night before. Uh, they went into the trap. I think it was the same group. Um, plenty of corn in there. It was the apple scented corn? I think that might have drawn them in pretty quick. Um, but they didn't trigger that, that trap door, so they did not go behind the trap door where that little uh, lever is, and didn't push that. So they went in, uh, you know, fed on the corn for quite a bit, and then left. And then they came back the next night because they didn't think there was anything you know, bad about this contraption and uh, ultimately that went back in and that night, so last night they actually did did uh, trigger that, that trap door, which is great. Um, as we drive out here, and I said, like literally when we unloaded that can I said, you know, let's just get my Steyr uh, bolt action in, in the k and because I saw this morning at 7.30 a.m. with a camera or something, I saw the other pigs from that group actually outside of the trap. So I literally tell John and Chris, you're like, hey, maybe, you know, let's just have the rifle ready just in case they're still around. As we drive up, it's it's kind of hard to see in that in that little area here because it's wooded and a little lower, so I don't see anything. Then we drive around the corner, all of a sudden there's pigs running away. And I do try to take two shots, but I uh, definitely missed. I wasn't prepared. Uh, rifle was still like in the in the gun holster or the rifle uh, mount. And then from time for me to take, get this rifle out, they already, almost across the field and I had to stop the can and get somewhat steady and uh, yeah that also would have been a Texas hard shot and uh, you know didn't work out but uh, that group is out there and it's kind of important for us to have that group because you're gonna have to release one of these pigs again so that pig goes back with that group and then they travel together uh, that leads out is not gonna make it past the next half hour probably I'm gonna I'm thinking that uh, I don't know how brave John is maybe he is just more of a you know a, Pig wrestler than I ever anticipated, but uh, that that sow looks um, difficult. So I think we're gonna go over there now. We only stopped by there, or we only went to the actual trap like once. Don't wanna get these pigs all too crazy. Um, put a little zip tie around the trap there real quick because sometimes they do try to pull this door back. And having three pigs in there, there's a chance that one pulls, and maybe they're smarter than we anticipate. But um, let's go over there and and kind of like assess size, what pig makes the most sense. Uh, lead sow would be great. But I'm just a little, a little worried about the effort it takes to actually get this pig on the ground to put this just this collar around. Um, the uh, tracker may be something worth uh, talking about real quick. So we used this case before, a uh, sticker on it and some fell hog control research um, note on there. Um, Cobra buckle. So we upgraded the buckle. It's the Cobra buckle um, based on Chet Lee's uh, input and also many others in the comments. Um, so this buckle is supposed to hold pretty good. Uh, Per gin, you do one uh, zip tie basically above um, those little uh, push buttons here. That way you can actually can't push them in. So one zip tie around here should actually keep this buckle from opening. Uh, we're gonna have to fit a little bit with the the size. So that's the adjustment here um, to adjust it based on the the pig size. This is as big as we can go. So I don't even know if that's appropriate for that big saw or not. We might have to take another. Uh, yearlings a year, one a year, year and a half maybe I don't know how they are um, in terms of interior of the tracker a uh, little different two 10,000 milliampere batteries so two 10,000 milliampere lipo batteries um, used actually the, the little circuit board I got from Doug uh, one of our viewers 
simply the circuit board. So now we have two batteries in parallel, which means they're going to run much longer. Uh, how long? It's to, to be figured out. Luckily, the weather is now warming up, so we don't have these cold temperatures anymore, which could affect the lifetime of these batteries. And then on the other side, um, it's going to be somewhat test and learn. I'm, I'm thinking two weeks or maybe one and a half weeks once we have enough data. And then we try to get after these pigs. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get to it. Uh, I need to plug this thing in. The worst thing which could happen is we uh, put the track on the pig and then forgot to turn it on. Um, so let's plug this in. Little beep. And then I'm gonna have to check the app. Make sure we get um, the, uh, the signal and the data sent. Uh, and then we can get to the interesting part, which is uh, watching John hopefully not get killed. Let's do that. You excited? Of course. <laughs> All right. What? So does that one in the middle look the least feisty to you? They all look feisty. The one which is the most feisty to you? <laughs> Trial by fire, man. No, I mean, except for the big one. I'm gonna lose my guts to this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that big one is too big for that tracker. So just size-wise, that neck is like this. The, that tracker belt or buckle doesn't get around it. So we're gonna pick one of the smaller ones and probably go with, I would say, probably with the cell. I don't think I need that clear. That's a boar, and then. Uh, yeah. We have one boar, one cell. I would say we track the cell, dispatch the little boar, and dispatch the big angry mama. Uh, what name did I pick? It was either two pig, like Tupac, but two pig, get it? Or the other one was Puff Piggy. I feel like those have been used, haven't they? No, we haven't no? used Puff Piggy yet. Okay. Or P, P Piggy, P Diddy, Puff Daddy. Yeah, that's Puff not piggy. bad. I was trying to think make something with Luda Crisp. Luda Crisp? Like bacon crispy bacon. Luda, Luda Pig? Luda Pig, there you go. Uh, so yeah, so the signal is coming through, we have, we have in the app. Puff Piggy, it's a, it's a done deal, I all think. Right, all right. Puff Piggy is sending a photo uh, or data. Speaking of, I need to take a photo of Puff Piggy, but it's a sh he, he, she, though. So maybe... Yeah. Well, Miss Piggy was a, a girl. Miss so. Piggy? That's, yeah. not, that's not a 90s hip-hop name. No, but I'm saying you can use that name for a female. Or a oh. It's, Puff it's, Piggy it's, for female? I think it's gender neutral. Uh, I think that's the... Oh, now you have, now you're being on... <laughs> Being Going with the flow of That's the right. time. Yeah. Is my uh, camera recording up here? It is. Right. Uh, yeah, so let's take a photo of that pig. And then get to, uh, get to work. Do you want to? Please. Yeah. She's the one you're gonna have to convince. <clears throat> Alright. You wanna stick your arms? I'm gonna distract her. Mm -hmm. You're gonna stick your arms all the way through that from the top. Don't do this, because what's gonna happen is she's gonna kick like and this is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And that, that part's like a bee. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab him like this, grab the hind legs. Once you have the hind legs, and you can pull up on the, on the tail. Once you have the hind legs, she can't really do much. Okay. But see if, try to keep your arms like down there, so otherwise I'm just gonna get in the back legs. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't get to the back. Huh? I can't 
do from the side to you if you get a grip. Yeah, she's, uh, she's decent size. Yeah. So I can, and I could use the, the gauge. You just trap her in here. Okay. Back in that corner, or what do you want? Yeah, I mean it, it is. Uh, um, and unless you can grab her again on the back, and then we can walk her basically over with you and me. Usually, I try to trap her behind the gate, but uh, that might not work with a big one like that. <clears throat> Getting pissed. <laughs> Push those buttons in there. down so I don't uh she not catch me. I'm not paying attention. Turn this thing right on. Alright. Picture. John sticking. Crotch. <laughs> Alright. Uh, anything else? No. Let me just make sure the tracker is sending. You zip tied, cut it, calls on good, tracker sending, and that's it.
Any famous last words, John, before you get eaten by, by an angry pig? Nah, no. Can't think of, was it worth it? Can't think of anything clever. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, good fun. I think you can uh, let it go. Okay. So once we had that little one out, I think that was a, a turning point because before it, I wasn't quite sure if we would get there out or not. Uh, usually the trap door works pretty good just to trap that pig between the fence or the trap panel and then the door. But the pig was too big. You could, you could barely get her behind that door. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, just getting her was difficult. She was laying down and then I pulled her hair and all kinds of stuff and she wouldn't, she wouldn't really react to it. But once I got her tail, I guess you grabbed the leg and then uh, that was game over. There was no, there would have been no way to get that, that big one. I don't think so. No, you couldn't, you couldn't use a trap door, uh, holding on to your hind legs. I don't know how we did that, Chris, that the big one. Uh, I don't know how we did it. That was a bigger one, right? It was big. It was bigger than that one, yeah. That's the one which uh, yeah, you, beat me up pretty bad. Yeah. I had like bruises for weeks because of the, the panel. And I'm sorry, I don't know if I no, hit, no, it's hit fine. your hand or whatever. Yeah, that's what you're saying, like don't like shove your arm all the way in if you can because yeah. he got beat up pretty bad by the panels. Yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, that 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 takes time. I mean, that would be a good back strap. I'd, I'd be happy to cut something up yeah. if you want to. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. So yeah, that pig went uh, straight for the brushy creek back there. So into that brushy creek uh, thicket. Um, I'm sure we get data back. Uh, the strap was pretty tight. I'm hoping that the tracker holds up. What we did forget is a zip tie around the case. Usually we put a zip tie on the case, yeah. hoping that that pelican case is uh, living up to its uh, marketing. Yeah. Damn it. Well, knock on wood. Nothing's going to happen. The, the track is going to stay on there. We'll get two weeks worth of data out of it and then we should be able to get after the pig. Um, that would be uh, ideal. So you're trying to get two weeks out of it and then we're, you're just going to try to Go find where it is and shoot it? Yeah. Get it back? And see if he can, you know, if it stays with the bigger group or not. I mean, that, that was so we had three in a trap, and there was probably like four or five of them running away, right? Like there three, were at least four. Yeah, four. three or four. There was three okay. big ones and a so, little, little yeah. big one. So, but yeah, it would be interesting to see how they travel out here. How far do they go? Right? Do mm -hmm. they go on the field here in the front? Do you live up there on the hill, uh, surrounded by farmland? Mm -hmm. Are they even maybe hitting your tank? You don't know it or something. That it's all kind of stuff you can figure out, but. Having the brushy creek down there, they probably just get water from there, I would have to guess. Yeah, so. until it dries out in the summer. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, another pig uh, tracked. Puff piggy. <laughs> um, maybe she does identify as a dude. <laughs> yeah, hey man. Never know these 2021. That's right. You know, anything goes. That's right. So, puff piggy is uh, on the loose and uh, uh, feral hog control research continues. So let's let that pig uh, do its thing and collect data for us and then we'll take a look here pretty quick uh, what data we get back, what kind of patterns can we recognize. Uh, the most recent one, Snoop Hog, has told us uh, what we learned from that is that uh, bedding areas uh, are not that unique. Uh, literally they have multiple bedding areas, I would even say tons of them. Uh, depending on what kind of food area sources you have close by or water sources, they might have a bedding area right next to it because it's convenient. So they don't go back to one bedding area, two bedding areas. In that last set of data we get back, they had uh, five plus bedding areas. Um, so there was um, basically in a radius of about two miles uh, all over the place. Um, it doesn't have to be m much of a thick uh, area. It could be literally like a, a, a skinnier stretch of woods as long as they feel Secure could even be, it could literally be in here. They could lay down in there and you wouldn't even know it. So it doesn't have to be a thick brush or something. It's just whatever whatever works for them, they feel comfortable and they feel secure, they, they would um, use as a bedding area. Anyways, uh, let's take a look at the data here in a bit and then uh, see what we can figure out. Immediately after we let her go, she crossed Brushy Creek right back here in somewhere. Uh, we didn't go in there, it's pretty thick, so we didn't check on 
where that crossing would be but as you guys look at this data further you will realize they cross the creek actually pretty often just in this stretch and that was basically right after we released her she crossed i guess the creek multiple times unfortunately the data we got back only spreads across four days because the tracker actually came off um, but let's take a closer look at um, the data we got. Um, we do see, you know, in this, this area here, definitely uh, some bedding areas. That's immediately after we released the, the pig. Um, she went in here, right around right there. That's um, uh, 5, almost 6 p.m. And then I'm not sure, sure what she did, if she was trying to uh, find food or find the rest of the group um, could be either or she continues later that evening 9 p.m. circles through that, that piece here I'm thinking she might have looked for the rest of the group and then right here that's about 11 p.m. 12 p.m. midnight same day um, lots of travel in here and then we lost uh, data. So there's um, a little bit of a cell signal issue, but I think it was the only one we had. So we had a break of data between first day about midnight to about one, one and a half hours later, so 1, 1 1.30 a.m. All of a sudden she's back in this area. This would be bedding, bedding area, 1 a.m. to now 5 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. So she stayed in this spot for a long time. She leaves right here. So she leaves this spot. It's a definitely a bedding area. She leaves this spot at 5.30 p.m. the next day. So if you zoom a little closer in here, pretty close to the edge of this field here, but a good bedding area. They stood here for quite some time. Uh, data is pretty concentrated, so it should be easy to pinpoint if someone would go actually in there. Then uh, they start moving again right after 5 p.m., now close to 6 p.m. here, uh, going down in this area. And then there's a question, did they bed down in here, did they feed? This looks like feeding because they sit in here for about an hour, 7 p.m. And then they travel back along the creek, uh, go through the field, but um, they move here pretty quick. So. The uh, start of the field about 7.37, almost through the field 7.47, 7.50. So within you know 10 to 20 minutes, um, they moved through this field. So that was more travel than, than feeding. Back in this area of the woods, and I guess since they're going back in here, and uh, they do quite a bit of... Yeah, that's feeding over here. So it's interesting that they, you know, on the... Uh, the following night, basically the next day in the night, through midnight and then in, in the morning, they actually fed in this wooded area instead of in one of those fields. Uh, something to be aware of, this is the March time frame, beginning of March. So these fields are all bare and they have been bare for a long time. Uh, most farmers didn't actually plant wheat because we were out of uh, rain uh, for a long time, so very little rain. Uh, then we had the hard freeze in, in this February time frame. So nothing has been planted. These fields don't hold a lot of food at this point, meaning it's a bad food source and these pigs are definitely relying on something else. And for this case, they were going through this wooded area. Could be that we had oak trees in here, pecan trees, uh, you know, some sort of uh, tree nut they're going after here, or maybe even rooting up just for lo looking for uh, worms and bugs in the ground. So it looks like after they've they, uh, have been going through these these trees in the wooded area, uh, they're bedding, bedding down, so it's about uh, 3 to 4 a.m. They're going in this, in this spot, moving slightly over, but it's 8 a.m., 11 p.m. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> so now that's it. That's the end of that uh, data that's moving only slightly after here. So um, this is the point in time where the tracker literally came off that pig. So the last, uh, significant movement was here at 6 a.m. two days after she was captured. So really 7, 7 a.m. is kind of the last movement. Um, and I can show you guys here 
how we found this tracker. So one, I pulled up the uh, map data on Onyx Maps. Uh, I have a subscription for the owner data and so forth. So I know who is actually owning this particular lot. And then I uh, actually just uh, kind of knocked on the door. I, I showed up there and you know told the story and was able to to find the owner. And he was actually pretty interested. Very nice guy. Um, got to talk for, with him a little bit and. Um, uh, yeah, he didn't have any problem with, with us going back there. He joined us. He joined us in the search. So we went through quite a bit of um, woods and trees back there, pretty thick. Um, and, uh, you know, you would think that one of those trackers with the orange uh, color and the yellow case and so forth would be easy to find. And on top of that, it was obviously also still submitting its GPS location. But it took us probably a good 15, 20 minutes until we found that thing. Um, and then I just found it laying on the ground. Um, so you can see the picture here, that's, that's how I found it. Um, the collar and everything's still intact. Uh, the, the buckle, the, the copper buckle was still um, uh, plugged in. So everything was in good shape. Um, that pig was just on the fattier side. I mean, she had a pretty thick neck, uh, meaning that um, the transition from neck to head is, uh, there's no difference in, in diameter, I guess. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, she, she got lucky. Being on the fattier side in this case was uh, the healthier option for her. Holistically looking at this data, uh, even though it's very limited, it does tell us that they're, it does tell us that they're staying close to the creek. So creeks, uh, that's something I, I knew before and uh, I think many people uh, will tell you as well that uh, creeks are like pig autobahns, right? They stay close to the creeks. Uh, it's a water source. You have trees, you have cover usually along these creeks. Um, and then it's sometimes often uh, easier to travel, especially if those are uh, seasonal creeks, so they um, lose water during the summertime. A perfect opportunity for them to uh, create wallows and, you know, stay in these wallows during the days, especially uh, during this hot summer month in Texas um, that helps them to stay cool. Uh, so there's a good chance as you travel along these creeks, um, if you're quiet enough, uh, you might as well stumble over a pig and, uh, you know, if it's still sleeping, then there's a good opportunity for you to go after it. But yeah, that wraps up the story and journey of Puff Piggy. Uh, she might still be alive, she might not. Uh, lots of people hunting pigs in this area, including the owner where I found uh, this color. So uh, I also know that they're flying helicopters in this area. So there's a good chance that uh, this pig eventually if not already, uh, is going to meet its maker. So thanks again. That was a shorter episode on some hawk data today, but nevertheless, I think really interesting. Uh, appreciate you guys watching and see you guys next time.